This is RangerCast, Episode 11, 30th Anniversary Reveals, and more on Cosmic Fury. Recorded Tuesday, January 17th, 2023. In this episode, a peek behind the scenes at Once and Always. Shin Ultraman does kaiju-sized business, and Hasbro gives Super 7 a run for its money. This is RangerCast. As always, I'm Tyler Beto's Real Volto, and we have a full house here tonight. I have Lamar with us. Hey, back again. And Mike Manos. Hello. It's a full house, even though there's four of us. This is a funky card game. Good point. Uh, and we also have a new voice with us. You know him as Razgriz. Is that your full name on, on the subreddit? It's something longer than that. Like Razgriz Infinity? That's it, exactly. All right, yeah, Josh, how's it going? Oh, going good, going do- good, just going good, going kind of good. digesting everything from today. Yeah, it was a lot. We are recording this Tuesday night, and uh, this morning, Hasbro uh, dropped a whole bunch of news, not just all the toys that everybody leaked beforehand, like a bunch of party poopers, but a bunch of stuff uh, related to the 30th anniversary and Cosmic Fury and uh, some very, very, very big news that we will get to later on. But first, some much smaller news. Shin Ultraman, which was sick, made $600,000 in its two-day theatrical run. Now, that's not Avatar, but considering how niche it is, that's not bad. Did any of you all see uh, Shin Ultraman? I haven't had a chance to go out into the theaters. Honestly, movie tickets in my area are like 25 bucks a pop. Mm, uh, but yeah. definitely we'll keep an eye out for it on digital platforms. A uh, tiny company that otherwise puts out like Z movies uh, licensed it for home media. Um, I'm not sure when that's coming. That is coming in the spring of 2023 and it will be on VOD platforms. But uh, the movie was sick. And to your point, Fathom tickets, at least around here, are more expensive than regular movie tickets. Uh, I, I guess because they're you know special one night you know events. But the movie, I saw it subbed, and it embraced a lot of the cheesiness um, that Ultraman, especially back in the day, was known for. There were every, everything short of zippers in the back, even though everything was mocapped and all that. Um, it it was a really unique spin on Ultraman mythos and and Zolfi and Zeton and just the, the effects even if sometimes they're like intentionally cheesy sometimes CGI is maybe a bit suspect there were still just some really really cool scenes the office scenes I, th- I think it was Inverse who put it this way it's it, it was shot like somebody watched a bunch of Satoshi Kon movies while sniffing glue. The way that they're shot, they're like a bunch of really weird angles like just to try to make office scenes interesting. That can be a little frustrating. Yeah, yeah. But I I guess, you know, you're innovating new ways to shoot boring boardroom scenes. Uh, in other uh, Toku news also, Ben Namco is putting out SD Shin Kamen Rider Rumble in English, in Southeast Asia. So it's going to be one of those uh, Super Robot Wars uh, deals where you're going to have to import it or something. I honestly did a double take when I saw the tweet because the icon for Bandai Nemco Entertainment looks the same no matter what region. Um, I'm not sure I'm not sure how uh, region-locked Switch games are, or Steam games are, but it's something to uh, look into. It's going to be out around the same time as Shin Kamen Rider in March. And we don't know when Shin Kamen Rider is going to be out in the States. I mean, Steam games are not typically region locked, but I know there's a couple exceptions. So it's one of those things where we're going to have to wait and see when it comes out. Yeah, if it's yeah. accessible from the American storefront. It will no come packaged with a humble there. bundle with a bunch of stuff that no one else wants. Like, here you go. You're going to get the Shin Kamen Rider Rumble along with Barbie's Horse Adventures HD. Good luck. But things nobody wants, hey, like that hey, uh, MMPR hey, beat em hey. up that Bandai put out some years back. 
don't be this in my uh my Barbie horse adventure. Next thing you're gonna tell me is Hello uh, Kitty Island Adventure is a terrible game. <laughs> well now we know the entire demographic for that release in the West. One. And here's <laughs> something that I honestly don't like having to mention in this, but it's something that happened in the fandom over the last couple days. One of the D Flippo triplets, I forget which one. Got it doesn't on matter, one they're all equally dumb. Live and started bad mouthing con runners everybody specifically yeah every everybody everybody yeah. think, like who wasn't spared you know incoming you they came for jason font amy joe johnson scott zillner who runs power morph con uh nikia Brees, um karen ashley who co-own um ranger stop with a gentleman named mikey um and, like, they've been on this tear for a while, going on about how they're the original Gold Ranger or, or some nonsense. Um, I I just don't have any patience for people who, like, take, like, even within, you know, the niche that is being famous for being on Power Rangers, they're nobodies. All right, first of all, the original Gold Ranger is David Yost. I remember that episode from MSNBC. No, Art no, the, the, the original Gold Ranger was Fred Kelman. No, that episode exactly. with, with Billy was before the movie. I'm pretty sure that's season two. I might be misremembering, but it's definitely pre-movie. And second of all, as someone who was at Power Morphicon this past year, you were too, Tyler. We saw lines for every way you could possibly imagine. Storefront owners suit actors, stuntmen. No one cares about the DeFilippo triplets. No one. So... ...there because of a necessity rather than... I mean, I, I, I don't want to be that person, but at the same time, it's when you think of Power Rangers, especially like Zeo, they're not even in the top 50. It's like, like it's, it's, it doesn't even break it. Shut list. up. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, honestly, like... Catherine Sutherland, Nakia Baris, like some of these people that they're dragging through the mud, it's like these are the sweetest, kindest people on earth. Like if you were gonna try and win fans by attacking other Ranger actors, like I don't know, it, I, I'm not gonna say name names, but obviously there are some with a better reputation than others. But like these these people are so kind and sweet, and like y you're just digging yourself a hole. Just you know, you don't need to do that. It's a very Gen X, late 90s, early 2000s internet mindset. And they're mm -hmm. so wrapped up in hearkening back to 1996 in their tiny little vestige of being notable at anything that unfortunately their attitude toward the fandom is kind of wrapped up in that mindset from that era too because people used to be a lot more bitter about things back then. So maybe, yeah. maybe they're going a little too method. <laughs> And for their part, uh, Karen, Nikki, and Mikey from Ranger Stop put out a statement uh, saying in part, quote, we have worked hard to provide a place to connect Rangers to fans. This has been a labor of love that not only involves the funding and coordinating of everything that goes in making a Comic-Con, but has also allowed us to extend opportunities for fans to attend our events and obtain transportation to get there for free. We will continue to do that for years to come. We have heard and have watched parts of the drama that has unfolded this weekend. We like not to participate in social media publicity stunts. We run a successful business and want to stay focused on celebrating Power Rangers turning 30. Um, you know, and I, too, you know, really just, like, I hate, you know, engaging in any of this negative energy that, um, that surrounds the antics of certain people in our community. And that's why I really didn't like having to, to talk about all this mess. But we had to, if only to, you know, call out toxic when it comes right down to it, though, like, I had not heard this happened. And I would be willing to put money on the fact that somebody listening to this podcast right now did not know that happened. Yeah, yeah. And I hate, yeah. I hate you know, amplifying it. But we also, you know, need to shame these idiots. Yeah, and I well, mean, honestly, uh, this is just, uh, you know, like that office quote, I'm going to start going to Ranger Stop even harder now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, I, I would if it weren't so expensive. Oh, but, yeah, uh, that's the truth. 
It, it was only thirty dollars for the weekend pass. Well, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not but it's do like, like the old VIP thing. But then there's getting your butt yeah. to Florida, get you know, in the their hotel and all. That. Oh yeah, true. No, why don't you, you just know, teleport I'm, I'm in, that. Tyler? Me. Yeah, or, or, you know, move to Florida. Which I'm not gonna do. No offense to our Floridian listeners. I'm sure it's nice. Except during hurricane season, then it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, oh, real fast, I do want to add in. That just it's just something that occurred to me. I guess my question with the twin, uh, the triplets, is what do they gain from this by stirring up I... the fandom outside of controversy? <laughs> like negative attention is in this respect is not good. I really don't know. I mean, I I've stopped trying to. Figure, They're hoping for some of sort out. of TMZ or BuzzFeed pickup. Be like, former Power Rangers actors lashes out at fandom. And then you click, they'll have like a picture of JDF or something on the article. And then you click it, it's like these three nuts. It's like, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> and uh, one last thing before we go to break uh, and get into the real meat of our episode is the post of the week for the subreddit. A uh, user, Rotini underscore Noodle, posted a 3D printed mashup of the Tiger Zord, the Dragon Zord, and the Falcon Zord. And it looks really, really cool. Like, it used the, the chest piece uh, from the Dragon Zord as kind of shield, um, and used part of the chest piece uh, uh, from the Dragon Zord on the chest of the Tiger Zord. And it, like, it really, I really like how this came together. It was a, a really great idea. Art Absolutely. is art, man. I mean, yeah. some people are really good at it. Yeah, no, for sure. Hasbro Absolutely. should hire them. Yeah, and and he made it so that the uh, Falcon Zord could clip onto the back of of uh, the rest of it, and it looks it looks really snazzy. Uh, the link is like a lot of links we're talking about, nearly all of them, in our show notes. So we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we're going to nerd out about everything that we saw earlier today. Be back in a bit. So you want to hear people talk about Japanese cartoons. You know, anime. But you think the other anime podcasters just aren't nerdy enough? Sounds like you need to join forces with the Anime World Order. Where each week, three self-proclaimed experts offer you reviews. Of titles both new and classic, news and commentary, rants, convention reports, interviews with fandom, and some hentai and yaoi for good measure. So search for Anime in the iTunes Music Store. Or visit our website at AnimeWorldOrder.com. Anime World Order, revealing the truth about anime, one podcast at a time. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm Tyler. And I'm Mason. This is the Dads Are Dorks podcast. As you can tell from the title, we're dads and dorks. Join us as we traverse the multiverse of nerd culture as fathers. We're going to bring on our friends and guests to come hang out with us. And as the Dungeon Master, we'll also be playing games like Who Said It, Batman, or Macho Man Randy Savage. That's right, so make sure you hit that subscribe button today so you never miss an episode. You can find the Dads Are Dorks podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, and we're back. And Hasbro had nearly an hour-long fan stream today in which they talked about the toys. Uh, they also talked about show news. And like Hasbro did this morning, we're first going to talk about the toys. They had four Lightning Collection announcements, four mainline Lightning Collection announcements. Uh, the Dino Thunder Black Ranger, which I understand is getting a little hard to find. I know it's sold out in Pulse, right? Um, but yeah. if you haven't pre-ordered it yet, get on that. Mezagog, which looks fantastic. The Lost Galaxy Pink Ranger Kendricks, I, I should clarify, and Dino Fury Blue, shown off by Kai Moya himself. And all these just look so great. Oh, and Tangas. Absolutely. They, um, they all look so good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, I, you know, I... I, I, you always get that wavering with the quality of the Lightning Collection, but man, if these are what we're getting for these releases within the next couple months, gosh, how could you avoid? Especially that Mezagog. That Mezagog is probably the best 
Mezagog I have seen of anybody try to recreate since probably yeah. Heroes of um, of the Grid with their little mini at this point. Yeah, the, the mold and the, the articulating jaw, it looks so spot on. It reminds me of way back when the uh, Shadow Ranger figure came out. We were wondering, you know, like it was early in the history of Lightning Collection, like how right were they going to get it? And they got it just spot on. And it's yeah. like that, where there, you can't really be a whole lot of like good photos for them to go on, but they still just nail it. Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah and the Kendricks figure comes with detachable glasses, something we can get back to later. Um, and you know, there's a, like there's a little bit of a gap between the you know the, the strands of hair down the side. That's where the the glasses snap on. I wonder how secure those are going to be. I'm not sure what kind of mechanism they're using to secure the glasses. I don't know if it's a mechanism. It looks like it's just you stick them on and gravity does yeah. the rest. Yeah. Um, on the upside, though, it does come with a full-size uh, Quasar Saber, which I know that's been an off-and-on situation for the Lost Galaxy line. Yep, yep. yep. I was going to agree with you there. Of that, that, that was something people were pretty much saying, which kind of ask the question whenever we get the crone uh lost galaxy one is she gonna have a uh the full saber or the uh shortened one it i mean might i don't know yeah. it so there's i haven't heard anything official but obviously a, a major the logical thing would be to put her in a two-pack um, for the Corona Astronema two pack. Yep, and then you've got the Corona head, which can go on to either. Um, you know, it, as far as gear, it looks like what they're doing is by not having the like the plastic covering or the plastic front, they're putting a little bit more extra into the gear and the the stuff we're getting. So who knows? Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. I was yeah. gonna say like usually the two packs are like versus packs. Like recreating scenes from episodes, but then I remembered there is an episode that a Corona Astronoma two pack could be from. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's yeah. I really hope if they do do that, which to me it's inevitable because you're going to have extra figures. All I ask, as someone who's one of the, my favorite Rangers, is Corona. Please don't make it Same. San Diego Comic Con exclusive. Like. Don't don't pull the uh, MMPR red and gold ranger one. Please may, let it be its mm. own thing. <laughs> That's all yeah, I ask. Yeah. I mean, they haven't and, done that yet, so thank God. And uh, they did acknowledge JDF at the top when they talked about um, about doing the um, the mold, the new face mold for Doctor O with the uh, the soul patch and everything, and yeah. uh, the uh, Hasbro. Uh, toy team host said that they worked with JDF in person uh, on that mold, but people were reading a little too much into that, like, you know, thinking that also meant something for the special, which it didn't and doesn't, um, right. unfortunately. Uh, and they, yeah, they showed off the Tengas, which are going to be a two-pack and an online exclusive out, out in the fall. People were noting it looked more like the movie Tengas than the show Tengas. Yeah, see, I noticed that too. The the and, beaks look yeah. a little bit shorter and like more. I don't. I don't think squished is the right word, but more compact. I guess I was like, these look more like the Tengus. Well, I believe the yeah. movie Tengu beaks were distinctly purple because they had a little bit of Ivan Zoos on there. Did they? Huh. That's something I'm gonna have to go back and I see now. I think yeah, so. Check. Yeah, that they sounds all, yeah. right. Um. I mean, this would be like the third. Uh, I mean, this there would be three tangas now, um, and it looks like they're all different colors too. So the the two pack are different colors from the original release, which is nice for army building. Um, yeah, it's just if you're if you're a one and done type of person, it's kind of like okay, well, I can pass on this. Yeah, yeah, and you know, you hope that they uh, they don't sell out or it's tanga bye bye. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'll I'll go to my room. So Not after <laughs> after uh after that they did a little show and tell 
with the uh, Zord Ascension Astro Megazord, and I cannot wait for this. The, the, it even has the, the very loud, satisfying clicks. I love that. Thing. Yeah. See, I'm I'm 100% with you, because I'll be up front. I was not sold on the Dino Megazord or the Dragon Zord, Zord Ascension. It just... Something of it just does not work well, but with the Astro Megaship slash Megazord... I feel like my money is being very wor well worth spent uh, picking this one up. That thing looks fantastic. Yeah, they, they had the Astro Megazord. Too. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, well, it that's, is. that's canonically accurate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like people actually like consult like consulted, uh, you know, Japan's facts and figures about how tall these Megazords are. Like if you put it next to the Zeo Megazord uh, that they put out a couple years ago, that is the correct proportions. Yeah. So that that's everything's as it should be as far as that goes. Um, everything's to scale, and they talked about how they worked off not just reference from the show, but reference from the old Bandai toy, which is a really great touch. Yeah. See, and that's you know for all the all the times me personally where I was like, dang it, Hasbro on it, man. Do when they get stuff right, they get stuff right, and. Kudos to them for doing so well with the Astro, uh, re respect to the Astro Mega Ship slash Megazord. With a gosh, it's so neat. Yeah, yeah, and you're getting what you pay for with this stuff. And they yeah. weren't done with toy stuff uh, after that. Uh, they ha they announced officially. Uh, there were kind of you know drips and drabs online about at least one of these figures, but they announced the uh, Lightning Collection Remastered line featuring a full team of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And they, these figures, they give Super 7's Ultimates a run for their money. They're priced at 34 where the Super 7 Ultimates are 50-something. They come with with uh, you full, fully painted props and um, and effects and, de and carefully painted details, rather, um, you know, paint where there wasn't paint before. And they just look fan freaking tats. They even come with little mini morphers, and the hands allow you to do to have the rangers do the morph pose, which is just you know, like you know, ten out of ten. Yeah, yeah, they're I good. Mean, they look fantastic. The only thing is, like, I, I already bought these, and I've got like three Mighty Morphin Yellow Rangers. I I don't want to. To spend that, the extra on it, but like I know I might. Does that count the uh, the the swapped version with Jason? Uh, no, pick? no. I just um, I got a Scorpina Aisha from Amazon, and mm. there was an issue with it, so they're just like, oh, we'll send you another one. Mm. Okay, okay. Um, man, yeah. yeah, I would I would get them just for the boxes, like the boxes. But to their credit, man, they haven't like the morphed on the back or on the sides. That that's a nice touch. Yeah, yeah, and the only um, thing that I think Super 7 definitely has over these is that the Ultimates include every conceivable head and prop. Um, it has Trini with long hair, as well as an Aisha head, and props like Mr. Tickle Sneezer, and yeah. things that are relevant to episodes. But But both figures have every flavor of Power Blaster, etc. And I'm really looking forward to picking both these up. Well, what, who am I kidding? The whole line for 34 bucks. What I wonder, though, is since it's time to coincide with the anniversary, or coincide-ish with the anniversary, if Min will get a figure, what they're going to do about Min? Because it is I... me that, they, yeah. See, I if I was worried about, about a... Yeah, see, I thought about that with the if if you mentioned two pack, I would assume she would be the San Diego Comic Con exclusive. I I would put money on that. It, it only makes sense with it of hey, you want a special figure? Come get Trini's daughter. Like it it makes too much yeah. sense. Yeah. Well, I think what's kind of boggles my mind is that we've gotten some lightning releases uh, for Dino Fury, but. And I'm sorry, Lamar. We're going to have to get into spoilers at some point. That's, in this episode. that's fine. No, I get it. Um, I should have said that before we started. 
but the suit that Zeta wears at the end of Dino Fury, the very last scene, there's no reason that shouldn't be on shelves already. And it seems to me like the show side and the toy side aren't always on the same page. I think, I think, um, so based on some industry stuff that I've worked with, sometimes it's related to they don't want to mix the lines up. Um, I won't delve into that. I can tell tell y'all after uh, this recording, but usually if that's something they're holding that back for a reason because they expect it to be a big seller um, or it's such a huge plot point to something, they want to hold it off. Um, it's the same reason why I think they're going to wait. Because, uh, I mean, if you haven't seen the, the artwork for um, the Lightning Collection remix, all six Rangers are there. And they've already shown a Lord Zed artwork, which means he's coming down the line at this point. I'm betting they are had, holding it We already it had Zed, but is Zed remastered, maybe? Exactly. It's, it's Zed, maybe Dino uh, Fury Zed. Or something like that versus individual the uh, yeah yeah um my guess is they're going to be holding back this figure either to for whatever reason it could be a plot point and they are not ready to release it or they're going to release it as a full pack like with the psycho rangers or the um alien rangers it's going to be an all-in-one yeah well we'll see what they end up doing and speaking of plot points about I want to say an hour-ish before the stream this morning, an Entertainment Weekly article dropped and a behind-the-scenes feature at dropped about the new uh, 30th anniversary special coming in April. It's called Once and Always. Let's listen to a bit of that. There's so many little Easter eggs. I just think it's going to give the fans everything they want. It's such a, a different take on what we've done before, but a lot of the same elements are there. I think what I'm most excited about for the fans and this 30th anniversary special is for them to see us all together and our chemistry and our growth. I think this is the best way we could have celebrated 30 years. So, yeah, that was, like we said at the top, it was a lot. And I feel like there are going to be parts of parts of this are going to be tough to watch but uh, you know given everything that's happened but it's going to be a celebration uh yeah um i i'm just letting you know i've already let my work know that i'm ready to ugly cry in a good way on april 19th just are you okay yes <laughs> already yeah. ready i already have my um so i i dm for a women's only group for Power Rangers on the Renegade system. And we're all trying to figure out a watch time of like, do we all want to stay up and watch this together? Do we want to get up like Saturday morning ish and do it? Like we haven't figured that out since it's a Wednesday of all, all days, you would think they put it on a Saturday, but everyone I know of at least is like, yeah, we're watching this. <laughs> well, you know, do it like, you know, like, you know, Fox kids in the old days, have it go live on Netflix at like 8 a.m., 9 a.m. on a Saturday morning. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th I feel like they're going to treat this really special, especially when it's the Netflix budget as well as they don't have to rely on commercials. They don't I, – I'm just looking forward to it. There, there's no other words for it. I think this is just going to be – fantastic it's a week after my birthday uh so i'm looking forward to it <laughs> and and the details like the shots include the rad bug too um just gonna be a hybrid oh, I... I bet money on it it's gonna be a hybrid <laughs> rad bug yeah billy would jokes on you it was a hybrid before <laughs> a lot of like clearly like they're shooting a lot of helmetless scenes or they did shoot a lot of helmetless scenes no 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 no, 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 no. walter and david are shooting helmetless scenes not so i guess you're right other people <laughs> Not so much the other people, which um, plays into a really great theory that I'm going to get to probably later. In this, yeah, Steve Cardenas works out a lot. He's a little too buff to fit in that red suit. Um, but also, speaking of suits, Cat is using a pterodactyl coin, which um, 
I guess, you know, maybe it's just what Billy has access to. We don't really know. Or are you Master Green doing her thing again? And another thing we didn't know yesterday what we knew that Alpha was coming back, but we didn't know that Richard Horvitz was coming back. And we didn't know who the villain would be. And we do know that now. It's a robot Rita Repulsa. We don't know who she's working for or any of that or, you know, who built her. But she will be voiced once again by the fantastic Barbara Goodson. And... Uh, hmm? Sorry, sorry. I was going to say, is it... Is it just something like a thing where everybody's like from all across... Does it like warm your heart to see like all the fandoms like turning attention to Power Rangers now and just going, it has been 30 years and everyone yeah. was kind of squealing like they were being like five, seven years old. Like I have friends who haven't watched it in years. They're like, yeah, we're going to we're gonna tune into this. This is some nostalgic stuff. Like it's almost to them, they said, it's a farewell send off for them as adults but at the same time if if this is the point where stuff's going to change this is a good point to tune in like with their kids of hey this is what we watched growing up i mean i had friends yeah. who went with me to watch the 2017 power rangers movie day one and they hadn't seen the show since mighty morphin days just because of you know brand recognition so that's always what you're that. telling me mighty Mo- you tell me there's other ranger teams than mighty morphin <laughs> <laughs> you sound like hasbro <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there. Uh, but uh, the synopsis, or the close thing to a synopsis that Becca Barnes and Ellen Dale were able to offer during the stream, was that the Rangers come face to face with a familiar threat from the past. In the midst of a global crisis, they are calling once again to be the heroes the world needs. Inspired by a leg- legendary mantra from the franchise, or rather, I should say, Operation Overdrive. Once a ranger, always a ranger. Once and always reminds everyone when you become a ranger, you are always part of the ranger family and always welcome. And there are scenes of the featurette. (laughs) Yeah, I know, right? There are scenes of the featurette that include somebody in a Green Ranger suit, but all we know is it's not, you know, that Jason Frank is still not involved in this. It's also a slightly different Green Ranger suit. The armband's a little uh, cooler. Um, it seems like every time that suit shows up, it's a little different. But all the suits, if you look closely, are a little different. Like the um, the diamonds on the gauntlet, they're raised. Yeah, a yeah. lot like a lot of little details. Like they, like there's a lot there's a little more texture to the suits. I think that ju- that just might be um, a consequence of filming in HD because stuff that was meant for video cameras 30 years ago doesn't necessarily look so good today so they probably added those additional textures just so when compared to everything else going on it doesn't make the uh, the MMPR suits look quite as flat yeah that's true yeah i think i i, I can appreciate that um but plus to mention yeah. too if you looked at the new zealand uh photographs and everything I, I absolutely agree with you on that because when you look at the suits, they pop so much against God. the uh, yeah uh, the grass and the environment. And I think when they they were talking to Simon or the um the showrunners today for that episode, didn't they say something that they wanted to avoid like the trench, like that they always teleport to, and that they wanted to try something a little bit different? And even that different, like yeah. those suits show up on. Screen. I was noticing like, they that don't because, blend in. Yeah, those locations didn't look. Like anything I you know, recalled them see, like you know shooting or seen on Power Rangers lately, yeah, they definitely drove a bit further than Team Up Quarry. To be fair, as someone who went to New Zealand three years ago, I know oh. May twenty three is seeing uh, in Auckland in particular a lot of public works construction because they're building uh, this oh. tramway that's going to be opening, I believe, in twenty twenty five. So okay. that may have been necessary because they may not have had access to a lot of the places they filmed at before. But um, still, though, I mean, that's that's still good info. And it's still the cameras they're using. It seems like still like we're going to get the old school nostalgia while I mean, because the, the pictures have shown we're getting putties back. Like, that's the funny part. One of my players was like, wait, is that putties? I'm like, yeah. And I sent her like, I four hope or five they're robo like, putties. I cannot believe that would be fantastic and ironic on so many levels. <laughs> yeah. And people are like freeze framing 
and like just you know doing that super troopers enhance 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 thing on just every frame of footage every photo people catching things like rita you know appearing in person um or i a broken tube or a viewing globe yeah yeah i was gonna say with the the tube i and i swear by this i'm feel free to call me wrong uh, Hasbro, prove me wrong. I swear, in one of those images, it does show Zordon's face. Because to me, it makes so much sense to tie it into the comics. It appears that there's eyes. You can see, like, eyebrows, eyes, a nose, and a mouth um, above the crack. Um, know, some people could. said, they, no, I don't see it. But the other people are like, oh, I do see it. Joke's on you, it's go they, It could. They, they've, they've drawn, they've drawn <laughs> on... The are taking notes from the comics before, like with the Morphin Masters and with JJ. In fact, if those scenes with the Green Ranger aren't flashbacks, that's I my suspicion would actually put well. money on it being JJ. Yeah, my I mean that's my flashbacks. Um, I have... also... Oh, go ahead. Oh no, no, sorry, I had a delay on mine. You go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say if. if... It's the current it, with the rest of the people there. It wouldn't make as much sense to use green as opposed to white if it's like a modern day and it's it's Tommy. Um, yeah, well, I, I would have to assume it's flashbacks to the first team. Well, on the other hand, you know, when we last saw Tommy, he had the Master Morgan, and the time before that. We now, you know, it's been retconned basically that Master Green gave him the powers of the Green Ranger again. So, um, I have my it's... own personal fan wank theory as to who it is. Who do you think it is? I think it's the Green Master. I think it's Master Green taking the powers for I... herself. I doubt it. Um, because this, the way that this special has been talked about has been as a very separate thing from. Downey Fury and Cosmic Fury. That's fine, and but remember, the Masters are in the comics. Well, at the end of Dino Fury, Master Green is off the table. If I recall correctly. So that is that is my assumption, too, because I had a wild fan crackpot theory that it is Tommy, but it's just going to be a person in a suit. Because yeah. I was thinking, well, with the, the, the badges, the SPA... My my rando theory was, oh, it's all new recruits. But I'm like, we no, know that Tommy I don't think they would do, with do that. SPD. We know that Tommy right. has something to do with SPD, according to Soul of the Dragon. Um, but we're just kind of spitballing. But there is one really interesting yeah. theory that Toku Chris on Twitter came up with. And I'd like to get your thoughts. One of the photos has the Rangers with a very Moon Palace vibe around them. And... um shelves in the background with what look look like action figures on them what look like power Ranger action figures and the theory that he put out there is that this robot rita is out for revenge putting all these mini rangers in, into space dumpsters and that it's this that this is the crisis that forces billy and zach to get the band back together I think that's a great theory because, I mean, if you're taking the theory of stuff on a worldwide crisis that endangers every ranger, it would only make sense. You, you got to have that. And if a Serpentera doesn't exist, obviously, anymore, this is it. I, I think it's a great theory. Um, and it would explain away the absences besides the yeah. one they're already prepared to, to explain away. Also, um... <laughs> Well, because the base has so many design elements that harken back to the Moon Palace from yesteryear, yeah, that leads me to believe that um, they have to address that Billy went to space. Like, there's no way around it. Like, that's where he went. So I feel like with his technical know-how, if you have the means, especially as, you know, former Power Rangers with, like, Space Patrol, you know, Alpha or whatever they're going to call it, um, God, Alpha's gonna Alpha Five's gonna be the mascot. Academy. Of that. He's he's gonna be the mascot of Space Patrol Alpha. That's gonna be fun. Um, but the first thing that you would probably want to do is to like reverse engineer the technology that exists from like your 
all in foes. So I wouldn't be surprised if the base that they made, they went to the moon and scavenged all the old stuff that their enemies used to use so they could learn how it works and try to use it for good. And with all of those tiny little figures in the background of all the different rangers, well... Maybe they figured out how to use Finster's machine to turn those tiny little rangers into a brand new army. I feel like yeah. turning them into an army is a bit of a rehash of Dimensions in Danger. But but we're doing it and not some villain whose name I don't even remember because that special was terrible. Well, and if you take <laughs> a look at the like new face. But, you know, with, with Billy back, it kind of makes me wonder, you know, does Aquatar have no fault divorce? Aww. Aww. Is it is it too is it too long to say too soon? So even if it's like thirty years down the road. With him to work. <laughs> <laughs> Skype exists I, I, well, in space, Tyler. You can teleport <laughs> anywhere, and if Power Rangers can exist, Billy should have been able to figure out how to video chat his girlfriend slash wife. <laughs> then again, who knows if they're still together? I think Power Rangers should have a ranger break up and stay broken up, but that's that's a whole other topic for a whole other episode. We're not going to go into that. Tommy and Kim stayed broken up. No, I just think the Power did. Rangers as a whole should. They always have like relationships um, develop over the course of a season, and I want like rangers to break up and then stay broken up and like have a plot point of like how are we going to fight together? Yet we're broken up, so we're going to have to learn to be friends and deal with it. That's a I like that. They what cover it, that in uh, Power Rangers the audio drama. It's a fan production, but it's still good. Like we got to teach kids how to deal with tough situations. So I think that they should address it. But yeah. again, not the episode for that topic. Right. If you look on the Entertainment uh Weekly photo, I'm still trying to figure out where Rocky, Zack, Billy and Catherine are. And like a villain base, because that doesn't look like where all the action figures and stuff are. Because man, does that scream machine empire! But at the same time, well, it looks like there's an eyeball behind. It. And I keep trying to figure out the machine who empire would that has be. very distinctive image. Oh yeah, you're right. That is a cog. That is a, a yeah, lowercase c cog. Uh, yeah, I, not yeah, yeah I, not the minion cogs. It's to me I, if they're going to do something to pull people into the thirtieth. And just like I'm looking at the big thing that draws my eyes, there's the cog. There, what appears to be an eyeball behind see, the Rangers. You see, also, I mean, the, the action figure. The, I think the most obvious action figure behind them is to the right of Billy. You see the Green Ranger. So this would have. Oh my goodness, this would have to take place. If you look in this photo, this is at the Moon Palace. Because oh, if man. you take a look, there's the balcony. Mm -hmm. The balcony is oh, behind yeah, you're it, right. and Earth, you're right. Earth you're is absolutely behind right. it. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely right. I'm telling you, Finster's Monster Matic is going to play into effect somehow. Billy has the know-how. He tinkers. So this, Dude yeah. lived in his freaking garage, and his laboratory had nothing but trinkets and toys and everything all around it. Of course the dude's going to collect all the stuff from past villains, where they used to live, and set up shop there, and learn how it all worked. And that, It's in the character's name. Correct. I mean, and if we add that into, if you think about it... What is there left in the Power Rangers and the old school Power Rangers that's still around that you can kind of use as a story plot point? Serpentera is gone. The Machine Empire is stuff. I mean, you have Scorpina, but she's probably off somewhere. The moon base is still there. I mean, we know that because of the Turbo movie. It is still there. There may be something there to utilize, but who uses it is the question. That's but yeah, true. that's that's a, that's a. That's definitely the moon base, which the Rangers never went to the moon base with the exception of, like, the underground chamber with uh, the Zeo crystal. Poor Thrax got lost and never got the invite to where he was supposed to go in the first place. And that, too. Also, something else I want to touch on, um, Walter Jones has not aged. A day. Not At all. Day. Dude, look, him and Johnny uh, Young Bosch both, like, I need their secrets. <laughs> They, they even gave him a custom a made, uh, is, like speaking of like the costumes, they do pop. But uh, if you look at one of the photos, they actually this time around gave him a custom made four fingered glove. 
Yeah. Oh, neat. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah. And one of the photo, one of the other photos that features uh, David Yost, Walter Jones, and Charlie Kirsch, the one that features the rad bug. If you look a little closely at the background, again, everything's going on in the background. They're in a cemetery, so that might be uh, a difficult scene to watch. I'm just curious how they're going to try and weave all this into like what thirty minutes? An hour or so. Oh, an hour. An hour. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes yeah. minimum at least forty-four minutes. They're just yeah, Becca Barnes and Alan Dale said. Yeah, Becca Barnes and Alan Dale said that they, you know, uh, they you know had enough stuff to write a movie with, but had to cut it down. That, I hate that phrase because you can release a theatrical movie in sixty minutes. Well, I mean, if it's it's going to be on Netflix, however long it is, but just you know how expensive it would be to shoot. Side note, um, you you mentioned that by the way. You know what really got me choked up, I, and while I was at work, not not the Green Ranger stuff. It, that got me choked up. I think I know where you're the, going with this. When you mentioned the cemetery, um, as well. Yeah, I you have to say what choked me up was our little tiny bite sized preview of the. I'm not gonna say it's a remix because it didn't sound like it, but just an updated version of the original theme song. The other thing I uh. I noticed that I thought in this direction you were going in was during the um, behind the scenes feature it. There's a shot where they're you know doing some talking or whatever, playing like blocking in the background. Uh, there's a shot of Trini's morpher, of the yellow Power Rangers morpher, and yeah. that oh boy, that 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 I, got me right in the heart. Same, and I feel like though if you come out in the episode right off the bat and address it, you don't have to have it lingering over. Like it, it just makes sense to do that now. Um, I would say in the first five minutes, have it maybe something like Billy, Zach and uh, men uh, all visit her, uh, her, her site and pay tribute to her. And then you can move on with the rest of the episode. Yeah. Uh, for yeah. It. It's possible. I hope Aisha has the morpher and gives it to her. Oh boy. Me too. You have so, Karen you, there. Use her. You mentioned that. Um, they said, too, this is the first time um, Rocky and Zach are technically on screen together. Yep. Um, the actor is definitely right. for sure. Yeah, Isn't that also true for count. Walter and Karen? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walter and yeah. anybody. I think aside from the last episode, he has been on screen since. He was in Forever Red. Well, he, he have you ever met Forever. Walter, by the way? He's a really yes. cool dude. Oh, oh yeah, dude, he is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that special comes out April nineteenth worldwide on Netflix, and I'm not sure what time of day. Again, hopefully, you know, hopefully it's just the time would be if we we're airing on Fox Kids. But I know it's not how how Netflix rolls. They don't care about that history. As much um, traffic as it's going to get on April nineteenth, it'll get even more traffic the next day. But not so, an accident that they picked that day. <laughs> yeah. So also after we got all that stuff about the 30th anniversary, we also got another look at Cosmic Fury. We got a look at the full suits uh, and the reveal. You know, we haven't seen Pink yet. That's because there ain't one. Because Amelia will be taking over as the Red Ranger and the leader. And Zato, who uh, will have yet another Zato is the Drywall Ranger. He is the Zenith Ranger. He is the Beige Ranger. Uh, and we got to see a little a bit of the suits in motion, you know, behind the scenes reveal of what they actually look like on the actors. And that was underwhelming. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, again, it's what I mentioned before. You have to keep in mind that these suits are designed, especially texture wise, to appear on HD cameras and with the background and with color correction. Yeah, the, it's this the, is filmed on a cell phone. It's going to look weird. No, no, okay, it's the muscle yeah. suits, the muscle suits, and the you know the bland, uh, like everything from the pecs down. There's not really really a lot going on. Everybody's got boobs. Every yeah, everybody has a muscle suit on, which is weird for Power Rangers. Like it, it looks mean, like old Disney art. It's uh, it, it yeah. I I hate the the new costumes. I really do. I'm sure that they will look better. You know, in with proper lighting and everything. 
I think part of it is like ranger suits were always just supposed to be like very slimming. And I think the muscle suits kind of give it more of a Western as opposed to a Japanese look. I could see them well, having because some sort unlike, of CGI effect over the suits. Yeah, well, that unlike the older thought. suits, unlike the older suits um, that were fabricated in Japan, even the Morphin Master suits were fabricated in Japan. These were totally built in Auckland using using those like in house aesthetics, and you know you wonder how these suits would have looked. If they were designed by Plex, like you compare them to the King Oger suits, which look fantastic. And yeah, sometimes toy does weird stuff on the design front, but you can't deny how much of those suits catch the eye. I, I, I agree that I think it's going to be CGI because there's a lot of empty space. And I think that's going to be for power ups. That's going to be something for that. Um, I think there's just more to it. I will say, um, when they revealed Amelia as the Red Ranger, and you take a look, man, the red, the suit of that red just pops. It is, it stands out. It's a nice red. Yeah, and there I were like a couple that. details that uh, I've noticed other people notice in her suit, uh, where the Rangers each have a a piece on their side, so- on their right side above the belt. Hers extends below the belt as well, maybe to reflect that she's the leader. And a Japanese Twitter user noted, noticed what appeared to be a uh, Kyutama on her left wrist. And I think the color switcheroo was probably done for Zord reasons, since they're still using the Zord footage, the mecha footage from Q-Ranger. I, I told yeah. Tyler this off camera. Um, I find it very amusing that we finally get ourselves a red female full-time Power Ranger and we're using the Zord footage where we have a giant red rocket that we have to deal with. In your face symbolism. You're shattering the patriarchy and giving the most monolithic Zord possible to a female leader. I think that's hilarious. What I'm still curious about, though, is they're cherry-picking 10 episodes worth of Zord footage. But anybody familiar with Q-Ranger knows the way those cockpits look and how visible they are throughout fights. That's going to be an interesting thing for them to try to shoot around or shoot or, uh, you know, maybe like Thunder Megazord style, try to like superimpose uh, cockpits over. I mean, yeah. you have to look back at season two also. There's a lot of footage that's exactly the cracks where you have the die rangers on top of their mecha. And it was just kind of hand waved, like, "Oh, they're not there." Yeah, yeah, but, but from I, far I, I away, think... you can tell that there's some sort of gyroscope thing going on inside the Qtamas. But I think they can get away with it if they really wanted to have an original cockpit where Amelia gets yeah. to hoist her own unnecessary finisher weapon. I think you have to give those balls on the uh, on the Zords some kind of purpose. They look cool. Uh, you know, Fun. we've had like. You know, Beast Morphers didn't have a unified cockpit either. That's true. Fair. They didn't. Robusters did not have a unified cockpit. That's right. That's right. Um, and PR nevertheless built their own cockpits. Well, no. The reason they did that is because weapons. they had to incorporate the Beast Bots being the steering wheels. Yeah. Yeah. There was no way you could have that because then you'd have them in a group cockpit sitting in front of consoles and you wouldn't even see their bodies. I totally understand why they didn't do that for that season. Yeah, I agree. So, what are y'all's expectations for uh, for the uh, 30th and Cosmic Fury at this point? Th- um, before we do that, can we talk about the uh, the new weapons that the new suits have gotten that are new that we haven't seen yet? Yeah, let me reset. And uh, also, with the new suits, we also got a look at the new weapons. For example, Amelia is going to have a hammer. He's going to rock Mjolnir. Don't forget to... Um... When you're mentioning that she's the only now Red Ranger, when it's dinosaur themed, that is not a T Rex. She is sticking with her Zord still, or the theme of her uh, yeah, that's original right. Zord. And also, that's I was right. just thinking about it. Yeah, that was just kind of a joke. Mjolnir exists in the PR universe. Hartford has it, it locked up. It does. Yeah, yeah, it does. Which episode is what? Uh, it's the one with. 
Thor, where Thor's at Operation going. Overdrive. Yeah, it's the one yeah. where Ronnie um, steals a gem at the end. I think maybe one gets away. Something. No, that's the that's the Zord battle one. Um, it's one where Ronnie steals the gem at the end. What's the purpose of having super speed if you're not going to use it? Which is only characterization she ever had. But, yeah. Um, well, also, you know, looking at the uh, the team art, you can see. If you're looking closely, the Qtama that that Japanese Twitter user was referring to, and you know they're gonna have to tie into the footage somehow. Ah, uh, the episode yeah. was called "It's Hammer Time." Oh, okay. I put a lot of Overdrive out of my memory. And eh, watch it again. It's not as bad as you remember it. Mm. But yeah, well, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if repurposing old weapons and forging them into new stuff and. uh What's his face? Black has a pretty sweet Jigunda axe looking thing. Yeah. It looks completely unwieldy, unnecessary, but it looks cool. I Here's the question. Do you think the weapons are going to combine? <sighs> I'm inclined to see. Power Rangers no. has done this once before with original weapons. Oh, <laughs> Jungle Blaster. But that's oh. literally the only thing those weapons were used for. They're used to combine and get out of the way, you know, just to sell toys. Are you bad mouthing the usefulness of the armadillo puck, sir? <laughs> if, you, if you're playing armadillo hockey. Oh! <laughs> Dunk. Hey, I will, I will never not forget that because around like my teenage years, I, I remember having that random thought of, what was the use of the puck? And they made it really dramatic, like opening it up, like, Wham! It just opened. Okay. <laughs> uh, it absorbs the recoil. Exactly. There's a purpose for it. Maybe. Or yeah, Taylor. Um, you used to be the leader of the Power Rangers Wild Force. <laughs> now you hold this. Yeah. So, uh, what are you guys' expectations at this point for uh, what's coming up both in April and uh, in the fall with the premiere of Cosmic Fury? So I have to say I'm I, I can't really comment too much on Cosmic Fury because yeah I'm not caught up on Dino Fury, but for the 30th anniversary I really think it's going to end up being a love letter to the fans you know um, the the cast especially you know more the the older cast they I mean their lifeblood is the fans I think they're going to try and put together something special I can agree with that if I had Cosmic Fury. I think juries are still out on that one because I, I need to see more because they've kept that so under wraps and 10 episodes. I'm reserving my judgment for that because Dino Fury had such a high bar. Let's let's see where they go with it, especially with original footage. Now, that being said, with everything we've seen, everything we've gotten a little taste of with the 30th anniversary and who is coming back, I'm going to say my I have a bar that's a pretty high bar for the 30th anniversary. There's some things I can overlook, like if uh, uh, certain actors like declined or couldn't make it out there or anything. Sure, I can wave that, especially if they play it to the plot. But as much as they're pushing it, man, my, my bar, I have very high expectations for the 30th to succeed. I, I'm torn on both of these, to be completely honest. Regarding the 30th anniversary first, I want it to be good. I've been burned by this franchise before. I understand the intent to make quality. I understand wanting to respect the history. A lot of it's going to depend on how long it is. I really worry that a lot of stuff that they do might end up on the cutting room floor. Because I understand that Netflix is far freer with time and you know what you're allowed to do. I just am concerned that they may not want they may not have the chance to do everything that they want to do and the hype machine is a dangerous thing where you know like, what if what if what if most of the stuff that we mentioned in this podcast may not happen and they may come up with some other reasoning to stuff which you know that's their prerogative but and i won't necessarily be disappointed but i'm going to try to have unlike having a high bar i'm going to try to go into it with no expectations and if I come out, you know, enjoying most of it, you know, getting past, you know, the, I, hey, I recognize that person. Hey, and just clapping like like the dumb four year old kid that we all kind of are when we watch this show. Um, if I just come out of it, then I'm going to consider it a win. I'm not going to go in expecting 
you know, this capstone on the entire franchise. So I, I welcome, it's going to be different. It's going to have a different tone from the show. You cannot do the lightning in a bottle that MMPR was in 2023. It's just not possible. There's way too many things that are different with things you're allowed to do and whatnot. But I am cautiously optimistic. Cosmic Fury. What was that? I'm sorry. I was going to say uh, real fast with uh, on your 30th anniversary. I have a question for you. Yeah. What is one thing you do want to see, though? Like something that out of from the past 30 years, something that because at the end of the day, it's still going to be a love letter to the core MMPR fans. Oh, What's I know one exactly thing you what do I want. want to see, though? I want Pratt Falls. I want Bulk and Skull moment. Okay. Not that many. But it definitely has to happen. I don't want this 30th anniversary special to try and pretend that it's something that it's not. People want Power Rangers to grow up alongside them and kind of disregard some of the, of the stuff that they don't like about it. But I want this to encompass the franchise as a whole. You know, the action, the comedy, the cheese. I want all of it to be in there. And I really hope that it doesn't lose focus on everything that the show had to offer. So, yes, I want there to be hokey comedy. What I want. Well, I think for starters, I think Becca Barnes, Owen Dale and Simon Bennett have earned our trust. And absolutely. Yes. Based on Dino Fury, I would say yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think that despite, you know, there being no series Bible for Power Rangers, despite the fact that that Alwyn and Becca are writing for a show that the whole time they were growing up was banned in New Zealand, and they're doing it this well, and they're working yeah. in stuff from way back this well, I think, I think I trust them with the keys to the castle as far as MPR is concerned, you know, short of bringing in Jackie Judlin, Tony Oliver, you know, it's hard to find people at this point who know power Rangers from the inside as much as they do. And I'm excited for the opportunity for victory laps for for actors who didn't get to say goodbye to the show in their terms. Yes, they should get their flowers. Not that correct. I and you had the same thought I did, and it's it's for another time for it as we get closer. You had the exact same thing I did though about when I was eating lunch today. Of uh, this feels very much like Spider Man No Way Home of this is the proper because I understand you have to soft reset at some point to get new fans. And that's what the comics are for. That's why Marvel and DC do it about every 10 to 15 years. This feels like this is the love letter slash farewell. Let's bring in a new audience, but we're going to send them off in a, in a blazing firework celebration. It's it's not even a and farewell. Like, it's a celebration of the franchise. To see, to see Zach one more time, to see Billy one more time it's just going to be yeah a real can a I, real celebration of can i say something that really they yes uh that's something that really does amuse me and it's just my own personal thing because i'm a petty person mm-hmm. am i the only one who is still chuckling that despite hasbro owning <laughs> the franchise why they're still using the legacy morphers and not the lightning collection morphers is just my own personal amusement. <laughs> These are probably the that they have on hand. And again, yeah, now I'm probably I'm to them to have but, their... um, I'm sorry, I, I had I had more about that. Yeah, go for it. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. And again, now is the, you mentioned the thirtieth anniversary. Yeah, there becomes a point where people these actors need to get their their flowers, they need to get their send offs. Let's be honest. David and Walter are in their 50s. It's yeah. like when you yeah. have Common Rider and they wheel out Hiroshi Fujioka, you know, who played 1971 Common Rider. And, you know, he's like, 
in his 60s, in his 70s, no one believes that he's actually transforming and fighting and stuff. It's like, oh, well, he, he sure is there. there. There's definitely a line where maybe it's like, okay, we have to strike while the iron is hot. So maybe that's why they're doing it in 30. Maybe they should have done it for 25 and they kind of tried and that fell through the cracks. And there were probably some logistics issues. So now they're like, all right, we kind of flubbed on 25. Now's our last chance. Because the longer that they wait, yeah. and you know, there's the suspension of disbelief. You can't happened. have That's a whole right. bunch of people who look like Albert fighting his Ranger yeah. on TV. Yeah, but uh, I'm I'm excited to see I'm excited to see David Yost again. I'm excited to see Walter Jones again. But it's going to hurt not seeing the two people we want to see the most. Yeah. But again, yeah. it does give a nice opportunity for people to shine in a situation where they might not have if circumstances were different. Yeah. And, you know, you yeah. wish that whatever reason that Jason Frank said no, you know, it's such a... it. We now have a very fortuitous circumstance that Austin St. John came back when he did. That's right. Because he makes the standing a little less that. painful. Because we just that's saw right. Correct. Correct. And, uh, and you know, that's something to mention, too, is if when you're mentioning, like, the bar, um, like, what do we expect from the 30th? I think it could go either way. You could get Forever Red. Or me, personally, I, I, I don't know about the rest of the room. I love Dimensions in Danger. That's just me. Or it could go the other direction of Once a Ranger and the uh, um, 25th one. It could go either way. I- I'm torn on Dimensions in Danger. Um, but before we wrap up, I did want to talk about the Cosmic Fury stuff real quick. Um, I, I know there's going to be a lot of discourse online about Amelia being red and having it be announced that Amelia is the new leader of the Power Rangers, which I'm totally on board with. I hope that they address why, because I it kind of works out well, because if you recall in season one of Dino Fury, Ion tried to lead the team and it didn't work. So I like that they... And again, if Zeta was Zenith, well, first of all, Zenith Ranger is an interesting choice of a name because we've had a Zenith Megazord before. If there better be some sort of shark pun in there, I'm really hoping for it. Come on, Lost Galaxy. Um, but Zenith literally means apex, you know, top, cream of the crop. And yet Amelia is designated the leader. What does that make Zeto then? Yield like a doggy I... Kruger kind of thing? I, I really hope that they actually, when they give Amelia leadership role, which I hope she steps up. Not only does I hope that she steps up to it, I hope that the rest of the team rallies behind her being the leader and they actually just like, no, we trust you to be the leader rather than having it designated upon her white light style. I really hope that they show that the team's like, well, I, mean, I want you, Amelia, to lead us as a team. That's yeah, be kind of what I was thinking. See how this happens. Like how she comes to be the leader. I think that's honestly going to be the plot of the first, by if not Master second episode of Cosmic Fury. They're going to address it early. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be her episode. They're going to have to do it because they, yeah. Because like, all right, you had all the familial stuff. Now what do you do? Her, her yeah, plot line have is solved. So they have to give her something new. So yeah, I have totally no problem with her being team leader also apparently between Zato and Ion and Amelia apparently only Rafconians are allowed to lead this team but whatever we're gonna that's that's a fun little side discourse there being having Zato be the Zenith Ranger and having him be white I really hope that they and because Zenith literally means top I hope that we get some sort of evil Ranger that's the Nadir Ranger the literal opposite like a kind of mirror image or a negative image I don't know how that's going to work because work because we have a black ranger on the team javi is there do you really have the time for that though 10 episodes of, undet- he- of indeterminate length no no they were gonna they, be regular there's no filler no filler and they're they have no sentai footage really to adhere to apart from zord footage they can do whatever they want and the showrunners have gone on record saying Now's the time we're going to take chances. We're going to do stuff that the show hasn't done before. We do not have to adhere to a formula. The show does not have to be fight, fight, Megazord. It can literally be whatever they want. I hope we get one episode that's nothing but Zord fight. I hope we get like two or three episodes that have no Zords fights in them whatsoever. I hope we get one episode that has no more footage and it's all story stuff. 
I guess they can do anything. Fuck Ooh, the trend hard, if that's though. what you want to do. Ten episodes it's, is yeah. a lot more than you think it is. It, it's going to be harder for them to do something like that, though. When I mean, ultimately, these shows are to sell toys. Like that's that's the point of it. Um, doing a bottle episode like that, if you're not like short on footage or short on funds, it, that's going to be a harder sell to the executives. You have to keep in mind, though, that this bottle episode is also coming out at the exact same time as the other nine episodes that are meant to sell toys. I feel like you're going to get into the situation that you have with The Mandalorian, where, if you recall, there was the episode where they were on the prison ship. I've not seen The Mandalorian, I feel like if I you. Okay, so it was basically they said they needed the budget for the final two episodes, and they did the old traditional, all right, we're going to make one set be the entire episode um, and move the budget to those. And basically they made a prison episode, the the, uh, the famous go-to one. And it's fantastic. I feel like if you're going to do that with a no Zord episode, that's what it's going to be. Is it's going to be something which plays into what you say about a memory thing, um, that it has to be one thing so they can move all the props and everything, the effects of it, into the final two episodes or final episode, however it is. And I bet you money it's probably going to be something of – we have – um, because they've already mentioned it, my my guess is Lord Zed is going to be the big bad. That being said, what I'm is, assuming though is. Oh, it is confirmed then. Okay, then yes. my assumption is they've already uh, established he was not defeated. They just played a game of endurance before and yeah, won. Yeah, that, no, that, that's clear the, the end Empire. of Dino Fury. Yeah, it's clear the end of Dino yeah. Fury is alive, yeah. Correct. So I think that's if you're going to get a memory episode, how do we defeat Lord Zed? And you're going to probably go down memory road with other enemies or something like that. That would play into that. And I, I agree with you. Like, if they're going to do it, that's the opportunity to do it is to save the budget. <laughs> That's fair, and if they air on YouTube, they could have a little title card in the top corner when they get to the memory. If you want to see this memory in action, click here for that episode. Um, I think that if they're doing Lord Zed, and like I said, my idea of the Nadir Ranger, bring back the Dark Rangers and do it right. Have a have a suit yeah. that doesn't look like it costs four ninety five. Combine them into one Dark Nadir Ranger that has all the powers before. Because honestly, they can't they can't fight just Lord Zed for ten episodes. We've seen Lord Zed be beaten before in other seasons. What are you we talking about? They, they, they did this for 130 gallery. some episode before. Well, no, what I'm saying is like, I feel like they need to introduce something besides Lord Zed, especially if they're going for as huge of a send off as they are with this team. This is the time, third season we've gotten with this team. So I think they're going to do something. I think it's going to be some sort of combined evil ranger be like you know dark rangers combined or maybe some sort of phantom ranger analog where instead of a ruby it's like the power of all darkness or whatever it's, uh, there, there's fan wank that you could have about it but again just the name zenith ranger leads me to believe that there has to be some sort of counterpoint because even though amelia is the ranger zato still needs something to do one of dino fury's strengths is that every single one of those six got something to do and i really hope that they all still have something to do afconians have been found that plot point is done. So our Zato and Aya need something to do. So I, I'm curious where Man. that's going to go. It could be a little bit of the uh, the tension that Andros and Zane faced, and that Zane ultimately uh, took a break from being a ranger because he wanted to help the uh, the rebels. True. So, man, see, I, I want to go on crazy fan crackpot theory again of where, do you think they're going to tie into the comics this way of do you think it's Dark Spectre? Huh. I don't think because they, Spectre. they've been really pushing Dark Spectre uh, in the comics and in the merchandise with Renegade. That I don't know. Maybe this is all tying together. Ha having the, the man behind the man, if you will. Like, you know, Omni style from SPD. I feel like that plot point is kind of like they did it with, you know, Lame. surprise, Evox is Vengex. You know, surprise, yeah. I was in charge the entire time. You know, Aghanim is really Ganondorf, that whole kind of thing. So I, I hope they don't do that because I feel like that will also kind of cheapen Lord Zed coming back. Why bring back Say Lord Zed that, if you're just uh... going to have him be someone else's pawn? That's fair. 
Um, I, I didn't think of it that way, and that's very fair. I was just thinking of the tying it in for merchandise. And my, my inner hope is like, all right, if they're going to do this, maybe the next HasLab is going to be a Dark Spectre or a Serpentera. But you know how they love to tie everything in. <laughs> oh, that's very true. And a big old Gordian knot of plot points. And I think that's probably yeah. a good but place would for any, us to stop. <laughs> would any, you know, HasLab project beyond something related to Mighty Morphin be successful? I think Dark Spectre would. I, I legitimately... I think, that's, I think that's too niche. Plus, you can yeah, have, uh, honestly, you can have the figure there's... package with a funny hat, and then he's Malagor. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 think... I don't know if that's going to really boost numbers. No, I mean, it, RSF's right. Like, ultimately, Hasbro's in a money-making business. they got to yeah. stick with the popular... Uh, one Serpentera might be the closest to a non MMPR has lab project that they could get away with. But again, or, a somber uh, note: if you see what Hasbro, Hasbro's not had a good week. If you see what they did with the whole Wizards of the Coast thing, which is a property that they own, and Dungeons and Dragons, Ooh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, again, all that high that we have for Hasbro. Let's check ourselves just a little bit. We this could go many different directions we can stay positive and optimistic Let, about it. Yeah. There is one thing we haven't mentioned, by the way, um, about the 30th anniversary. You know the one thing I am I'm, I'm genuinely have no idea how they're going to take it? Because if this is going to be an episode, we know there's going to be some cheese. We know there's going to be... Uh, we know there's probably going to be some unmorphed fights. We know there's going to be morphed fights. What swords are we getting? Mm. Are we getting Ninja Megazord? Or are we mm. gonna get uh uh the OG Megazord? What are we... I'm very curious to see what they're going to use for a Megazord fight, and I that has been running through my Zords brain. Ninja never like, destroyed. Oh. We're gonna right, because with the Falcon Zords. nostalgia, we're gonna have Billy completely rebuild the Megazord from 1993, and to properly tune into our nostalgia, it's going to have the CGI from the 1995 movie. But Master yes. Green has Master Green has an endless supply of hand wavium. Oh, that's the best. <laughs> I mean, they were able to bring back that Megazord and Dino uh, Megazord for Dino that's, Thunder yep. in that bingo. one anniversary. Bingo, bingo. Because why do we need explanations? There is a there's an explanation. Have Master that. Pink do it. There's no Pink commercial. Ranger anymore. Have Master Pink do something. Well, Amelia changed her color, so you know I kind of went off into my own little dimension, and I it did was this. it was Master Green, Master Green who died. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. There's so much they could do. I feel like I need a bingo card at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um. But we're gonna keep guessing, guessing, guessing until. Uh, the next trailer comes out, um, but we've been going long. This is going to be another uh, double length episode. Uh, so, um, Mike, do you have anything to pit anything to uh, plug? I should say. Um, I mean, I have a YouTube channel. There's some big videos coming out on that. It's called Torgo Entertainment. T O R G O Entertainment. Um, there's I always like to pepper in uh Power Rangers and Toku references in non Power Rangers related stuff that I do. So I always try to honor the Phantom Roots where I started. Um, so you know, feel free mm. to check that out. Otherwise, uh, no, not really. I'm not. I'm not on this podcast to plug stuff. I'm here because I like talking. Respect. Uh, all right, Josh. What? Uh, where can people find you? Uh, people can find me on the subreddit with Roz Grease Infinity, or they can find me on Twitter with Crimson uh, Sooners. And Lamar. Uh. So no socials, but uh, keep an eye out for Power Rangers, the audio drama, as well as Masked Rider, the audio drama, where I actually narrate. Are you Furbus? Ah, rock on. I'm sorry. Are you Furbus? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, just the uh, ephemeral voice of narration. So I guess I'm God. So Furbus. Hallelujah. Nice. You can find me on Twitter at RSF. That's A R E S E F. You can find us at RangerCast.net. And as we said last episode, as we're going to stay in for the next few episodes, if you or someone you know is having thoughts of suicide, call the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline at 988. Call or text or go to 988lifeline.org. Later, everybody. If you like what you just heard, 
Find us at rangercast.net or look us up in your favorite podcast app. Reach out to us on Twitter or leave a voicemail on our website. The opening theme is by Daniel Park. The ending theme is by me. Rangercast is distributed under Creative Commons license. A tribute and share alike.